Hey everybody, welcome to Trading Capital's daily analysis video. I'm your head market analyst here, Curtis Scouten. Jumping into the charts on July 28th, Thursday, July 28th. Uh, one more uh, day until we wrap up this week and we wrap up the month. So that's going to be crucial. What we're seeing right now on the S&P is this mega power rally. Uh, I'm just going to remove a couple trend lines so that we can see the charts a little bit easier. But overall, you can see that we've had this gap fill, which we've blasted through. And now we're approaching that secondary gap fill up here. But there is tons of resistance. If we simply adjust this trend line more so to hit this pivot low, which is where you broke down and had your gap over it, you can see you're running into resistance. If you slightly adjust it to hit this pivot, you are hitting resistance right now and just piercing through that. So there's tons of resistance in and around this area on the S&P 500, as well as many other stocks. Obviously, we have Apple and Amazon reporting in moments to come after the bell. We also have the likes of um, FSLR, Roku, Intel, X, Steel, VFC. Those are just some of the household names. Before we jump to the intraday chart here, um, congratulations on the profits that we pulled today. Magnificent job on closing uh, three stock trades and one crypto trade. We sold our, um, or sorry, we didn't sell, we covered our Teladoc for a beautiful, beautiful gain. Let's just quickly pull up Teladoc to see what has transpired here. So if I pull up the daily chart, Teladoc collapsed on earnings. Let me just turn off the volume so that we can see the chart a little bit easier. So Teladoc over here, our average was sitting around this 39.98 where it was failing to break out and confirm. Teladoc had this nasty drop. I think it was down 30% or so at the lows. And I was waiting to see if this was going to go lower into this day, but it ended up starting to catch a little bit of a bid and intraday buying pressure started commencing. So I decided to cover the short around the 33, but still it netted us over 16%. Uh, we also closed our GME short, GameStop short. We also covered um, our, uh, um, what was the final trade? I'm just trying to pull it up here. So we had GME, GameStop, and our LI short. That's right, our Chinese uh, vehicles. So overall, tremendous job on the profits. We also sold our Bitcoin for a lovely gain. Bitcoin is into resistance. We sold around 23842, and it has pulled off of that level. So you're kind of coming into that little mini micro double top zone where Bitcoin could see some pressure, which is why I wanted to yank you know, a double digit gain off the table, and we can always reassess later. I do think the markets are extremely extremely extended despite the Fed being more dovish. There's a lot of euphoria out here. A lot of people think the Fed is pivoting. I'm in the camp. I don't think the Fed is pivoting. Despite the bond market, which we'll discuss, is pricing in a little bit more of a dovish Fed. So let's just look at the U.S. tenure here. Oops, sorry. I'll just retype that in. So you can see clearly on the U.S. tenure, the U.S. tenure is pricing in a little bit more of a dovish Fed. And the reason being is we've been watching this neckline over here where it triggers this, this uh, head and shoulders topping formation. And you can clearly see you were teetering it, you pierced it, you pierced it, you pierced it again. But now it looks to be that you're going to close below it. Now, if you were to recapture this bottoming tail, then technically speaking, you're still intact. But right now you have closed below it. Monday will set up daily confirmation, which is what you want to really wait for. And if you're a little bit more of a conservative trader or an investor, you want to wait for weekly confirmation below that neckline. So uh, that being said, markets are liking that yields are falling in the short term. It's also meaning that the US dollar is weakening slightly. You can see this bear flag pattern that we have just been trading in. And it looks to be that this could potentially break um, sooner rather than later. Now, there's not too much downside. You'll have support over here around the 105 area, and then you'll have additional support over here. So you can see the, the lines are very close in proximity. And that being said, that will provide um, a great deal of support. I don't think the US dollar will slice through that. You can see you also have the 50 day moving average. So clearly tons of support in the US dollar. It's not going to be a matter of fact of the US dollar just falling out of nowhere because they are still tightening. And when you compare the rest of the world, they are tightening pretty fast. 
and uh, that and with the the amount of printing that is going on in Japan alone that could certainly keep propping up the DXY so let's just jump to the QQQs QQQs are having another positive day on the session right now they're up just under 1% at the highs they were but same sort of thing the Q's are running into resistance you have this pivot to this to these two pivots to this pivot to this pivot and now look what you just hit today so massive massive resistance there is this gap fill that's pulling it up there very close so it does favor a potential move up in the short term to at least fill that gap but obviously that's going to be pending on how Apple and Amazon report those two companies alone can either push it to this gap or it can push it back down so Time is of the essence. We have four minutes till the closing bell, and we'll get to see those, um, um, basically those uh, those earnings that come through. If we take a look at natural gas quickly, natural gas is having yet again another confirmed down day. So so far it is down over 4.4 percent. That is a beautiful, beautiful gain on our KOLD trade. Notice how you came down, you filled this daily gap. That's kind of where you're finding uh, closing support on. I still think. You have a move down to at least the 730-ish area, maybe a little bit lower. And how I'm coming up with that, if you just throw up a, a quick FIB retrace of this measured move over here to this measured move, uh, these two measured moves were identical from this orange line to this orange line in, in, in size. And this pullback really came back down to the 50% retrace zone. So I think that's going to be a good entry. I'm going to play it conservative because... I do think natural gas can go lower, but with the fact that uh, winter is approaching and there is still all this talk about Nord Stream pipeline shutting down and blah, 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 uh, we'll still be able to net a lovely gain that would basically put our KOLD trade up to the 1760, 1770 area, which would be a 24% gain. Let's take a look at the WTI oil. Oil, not really too much going on. You still have this little bit of a bearish consolidation going. You're stuck above the 200. You're um, stuck below the 20 and the 50. So you're kind of conferred, converging and consolidating what looks to be a move down. Tons of resistance on oil. It's really going to have to take a headline to move oil at this point. I think the recessionary headline is certainly taking dominance in oil. Along with the midterm elections, I'm still in the camp that we see a move down to 84, which was your previous pivot. And the interesting thing is that you are flirting with this uh, pre-COVID, or sorry, this pre-Ukraine-Russia invasion level. So obviously there is support there, but the premium in oil has now been stripped out of the market for quite some time now. And that's just really interesting to note. Yet again, we'll get a weekly candle tomorrow, which will be another piece to the puzzle in terms of where we close. Do we make a new weekly low? A closing low you know this was your lowest weekly closing low since the invasion and uh, it'll be interesting to see if we make a lower weekly closing low than this still keeping this technical downtrend going intact let's take a look at gold gold and silver massive massive moves look at this bull flag breakout we were discussing and watching uh, a clear clear opportunistic breakout beautiful beautiful price action we are long gold we are long miners a couple of them despite being long Newmont which I do think will play catch up. This is just being pinned down because of the three days after the earnings. Generally, there's still margin selling, forced liquidations. But I think after we get that, um, since gold has moved so sharply up, I think we get a move to this gap fill pretty quickly. You'd be surprised how fast Newmont can move. Let's take a look at silver. Silver's had an epic rally. I mean, a monstrous rally up over, you know, 4.7%. I'm just going to flip to the Apple chart now because uh, we are heading into earnings and I need to see how that performs. Amazon is getting a pop. Roku is getting a dump. Apple's obviously the big one, but so far Amazon is pumping hard. Roku's falling. We have Intel as well after the bell. Intel's falling. So far Amazon's getting a nice pop after the hours. It is up so far, you know, pumping up 7% there. Wow, that's a strong move for Amazon. Very impressive. But often the first move isn't the right move. So we'll just have to see if this still holds true, this Amazon pump. But the spiders are pumping. Wow, Amazon's really, really pumping up. You know, it could hit this measured move, and I would look to start a potential short position up at that level, 137. We're going to short Amazon around the 137 mark. So I'm going to start a starter position around the 137. If I can get my 
Okay, let's see if we can get a move to the 137. I'm going to look for a starter position on Amazon, basically 1% of the portfolio. This is probably going to lift Apple as well. Intel's catching a dump. Roku's dumping out though. Intel's now down. Intel's down 5.66% in the after hours. So pretty impressive there. Apple, we're still waiting. Let's just take a look at Amazon. Flip to the Qs, shall we? The Qs are catching a nice bid. Let's take a look at Apple. Or sorry, Amazon. Let's take a look at Amazon. Look at Amazon. Go. Wow. What a move. So Amazon, we're going to short at this measured move around the 137. Maybe just a pierce of 137. Wow. Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Let's take a look at Apple. Apple's getting a slight cat bid in the after hours too. Roku's dumping out huge. Roku is dumping out huge. Wow, Roku is down 15% in the after hours. That is an impressive dump. Apple's pumping so far. Let's flip back to Amazon. Amazon's almost at that short level, guys. Almost. Let's see if we can get that level. That'll be an interesting level. Yes, it will. Amazon's still pumping up. Apple's still pumping. That's impressive, to say the least. Wow. Look at Amazon Go. I'll just pull up Roku here in the after hours because Roku is getting destroyed. I don't even have any levels on Roku. I mean, I might have. Good thing we didn't buy these ones. Double bottom was nothing. Roku, Amazon's still going. Apple's still going. These markets are pumping. Pumping up higher. Much, much higher. Wow, what a terrific move. That's incredible. Look at Amazon go. Up almost 10% from the close. Let's just see where it closed. Okay, maybe not 10%. Almost 10% though. But Amazon's approaching that move. I'm going to start a short on Amazon at 137. Shorting Amazon. I'm just typing in an alert, so bear with me. Come on, Amazon. Let's see. Let's see if we can get up there. That means Microsoft is probably pumping as well. Microsoft is getting a good push. Roku's still taking a nasty, nasty dump. Let's see Tesla. Looking at all these other screens, we got X Steel as well. That should be an interesting one. Nothing really to report there. We have FSLY is another one. Nothing really to report there yet. Um, just trying to see here. Intel's still down. Intel's falling 7%. Look at Amazon go. Wow. Flip back to Apple just so we can see where Apple's going. Apple, there's the 618 retrace of this whole down move. Sorry, my charts are just a little complicated. I have them on my intraday chart action, so I have all my lines everywhere. And you can see we picked up that Bosch Health companies because I saw massive accumulation at that level. And the stock has been halted all day, except in the after hours now. It's pumping up. We're up from our level 23% on that BHC. It was halted all day and now it's pumping, pumping, pumping. So Amazon's almost at that 137 level, guys. It's at 134.40 and counting. Get ready to place that order. I will be shorting a one, a starter position, 1% of my portfolio. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't mind if you do more as well. It certainly had a tremendous move off the lows. Let's just take a look at the NASDAQ and see how we're doing. So the NASDAQ isn't good resistance, but it is getting that pump. Impressive, impressive moves for many of these stocks. Wow. So BHC is still pumping. Roku is still getting slammed. Roku is down on the session. It's down 23%. Wow, Amazon's, come on Amazon. Amazon's almost there, almost there. After hours trade could be coming in. Obviously the earnings have been positive for Amazon or the forward guidance. Here goes Amazon.
Amazon's approaching. Amazon's approaching. Let's flip back to Amazon. Look at Roku. Roku's being demolished. But Amazon's close, guys. Amazon's really close. I'm going to be shorting at 137. It's a measured move. Plus massive, massive resistance. It's almost there. One last little push. One last little push on Amazon. Here we go. Here we go. It's getting there. It's getting really close. It's getting really, really close. Roku's still down. Intel's still down. Intel's dropping really, really hard. Wow. Intel's now down 9%. Amazon, one more dollar to go. One more dollar to go. One more dollar to go. So close to our level. Come on. 137 it is. Bosch is still pushing up. 136, their last dollar on Amazon is really teasing us. Here we go, 50 cents. Amazon's pumping really hard. Really, really hard. Amazon, 160, 93. I'm in. I think I got filled. I should have got filled. 137. We hit 130. I'm filled. 137 on Amazon. Here we go. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. 137 right into our measured move. That is clinical. If we look at where we are in the charts, we're just touching this gap fill around 138. It's slightly above. My next ad level on Amazon will most likely be up here. Let's make that yellow and we'll have to reassess from there. But beautiful, beautiful resistance right up here. There's a gap fill slightly higher around 138. Intel's still falling. Roku's getting demolished. Roku's still down 23%. Intel's, Intel's now down. Wow. This is, in, this is tremendous price action. Tremendous price action. I'm looking to also sell. Look at that measured move. Is that clinical or what? Now, we're not out of the woodworks yet. Yes, just, let's just flip to Apple. See what Apple's doing, but we are shorting Amazon right here. We're shorting Amazon. We're going to try to take this position. I am going to sell this Bosch, I believe, for 539. There we go. So let's flip back to Apple just to see. Still haven't found any. I'm just watching the charts here. Roku's still trending lower. Roku, Roku, Roku. What are we going to do with Roku? Let's just see if we have a level on Roku here. So if we look at Roku, I mean, Roku's just been bludgeoned. You know, you have support coming up here at these pivots down here. Um, let's see if I'm, I'm considering to play this bottom here. Let me just do some work. I wanted to see any other cofactors. You know, we really want to try to stack up some factors on Roku. Um, there is another pivot there. Okay, so Roku's coming into some pretty, pretty deep levels. Let's just flip to the weekly, shall we? Just want to check back on Amazon. Amazon's pulled off of our level precisely. That is impeccable. That is truly impeccable. I did sell BHC. Sell BHC. What a sell on BHC. Sorry, I'm just typing in alerts. I'm looking at charts. I'm scanning. I'm doing a whole lot here, executing trades as well. This is tremendous. We sold BHC. We just picked that up this morning. It was halted all day for 26 gain. Congrats. If you listen and pick that up, knowing and understanding how to read the charts is critical. I mean, look at this price action on Apple's pumping. Amazon's still still teetering off our level. Now, Amazon could pump up to that gap fill. You can see on the daily chart, the gap fill's right there. But the power of a measured move where you've now completed a near symmetrical move, this dollar move to here. And remember, this was our rip roaring rally. This was our first bear market rally where Tesla and Apple made record positive days in a row. This move to this move is now exactly this low to to where Amazon just touched. So it's moved in symmetry, and I do think that we start seeing more downside now. Let's just quickly take a look at what else is transpiring. I, I'm trying to work out a level on Roku. I do like Roku. I do like Roku. I'm just trying to figure out a, a level here. So bear with me, but we'll continue this 
earnings call. We've been on it for now 21 minutes this video. I will limit it to around 25. Let me see if I can work out a level on Roku quickly. Okay, so I do like these two levels down here. Tons and tons of support around 58 and 50. This is your COVID crazy uh, sell-off. Um, so let's just see if we can pick some up there. I mean, you know what? We might just have to wait a couple days and it could sell off more and more. Clearly, it was a tremendous miss on their earnings or, or negative forward guidance. Something bad of that nature is happening. But uh, nonetheless, we should have some opportunities tomorrow uh, with Intel down double digits now. It is catching a little bit of a bid, but Roku's getting trounced. And uh, that's, that's certainly not going to be good for the uh, smaller cap sector. But Roku's still falling. I mean, down 24, 25%. Amazon still, you know, are hitting our measured move level. Um, our secondary ad level will be 144. Uh, maybe I'll adjust that, but that looks to be a pretty solid um, gap fill area that I, I would consider adding at again. And uh, impressive, impressive move now from Amazon. That is a tremendous opportunity that we just was able to capitalize on the short and uh, we'll just have to see. But um, I can't believe Bosch Health Companies, what a tremendous pickup. You know, I netted myself over, what was it? Uh, you know, I had a little bit of a bigger position. I only issued a 1%, you know, pickup to the members here, but uh, I was actually holding it as a day trade and plan to trim um, most of it off, but a wonderful price action. Let's just, let's just pull up BHC as well. Um, let me take uh, off this one here, BHC. So BHC, this is what transpired today. So BHC got clobbered on a judge uh, basically saying that their patent was no longer going to be theirs and that it was going to be an open market summary and it was halted all day, but it was it fell 50%. And I had a couple other buy levels, but one of the reasons why I want to show you this monthly chart. This monthly chart is on a beautiful time count, one, two, three, four, five, six months of downside in a row. Uh, you did have a gap down as well. Plus, if you look at the support, this is not just some you know company that hasn't been around. We got lots and lots of data here. They've been around since 94. And the fact that you've now retraced back to this original breakout zone. So here is where you had the dot-com highs. And then this is where the dot-com pain started just coming through. Or sorry, this is the dot-com. People moved into defensive area stocks. And then you started having repercussions from a slowing global economy in 2008, 2009. But this is where the QE really started and pushed the stock up. And now you've retraced back to this original zone over here on the monthly chart. So there is tremendous support. Not only do you have that pivot, but you also have these pivots, this pivot that is just underneath that. And it is providing tons and tons of support. But if you look at the daily chart, or sorry, the intraday action, one of the reasons I started accumulating is I was waiting for a technical signal. What did we get? We got a bottoming tail. As a trader, that's a beautiful signal to look for. You just, you can buy in right there. I, I managed to wait for a little bit of more of a retrace on the secondary candle. Bought in, you put your stop right against the low if it's a if it's a full position or if you start having additional levels to accumulate more, you can accumulate in DCA. But overall, that was an, impe an impeccable pickup and a beautiful, beautiful gain that we just netted. Beautiful 23% or more so lovely lovely job if you took that trade with me and that is the power of understanding candle formations volume analysis technical signals support and resistance just a tremendous tremendous job let's flip back to amazon here amazon still keeping our measured move as resistance apple's also still pushing up slightly in the after hours Roku's still getting trounced over here. It's just a falling knife at this point. But again, if it comes into our levels here, I will look to accumulate. That COVID low should, should give you a bounce. Nothing's a guarantee, but it should give us a bounce to contend with. So let's just wait and see how this transpires. I'm trying to see if I can do a little bit more of an analysis on this company just to see if we have any additional levels. Um, let's see where that comes in at. So if we flip back to the eight hour chart, yeah, that could actually work. You know, you have this pivot over here to this pivot, which is coinciding with your COVID lows. So that would be a tremendous opportunity if we buy. If we flush down into there, I'm going to be a buyer. I'm going to be a buyer on Roku. I will be a buyer. I mean, Roku has had some 
has had some positive news earnings as of late, so I don't know what's going on with this one, perhaps loss of subscribers, but it is getting hurt tremendously. I mean, it's now down 28%, but I'll certainly start accumulating a stock that is discounted 32% in one day, because if you have a 32% drop, I mean, I just, we could have a 50% rally before it breaks even again, and this stock is already beaten down, and the thing about this type of pattern, this descending wedges, a lot of people think it's bear flags, um, but this is not an actual bear flag. Typically, patterns start breaking up from a downtrend of this nature. But let's just wait and see what happens there. Amazon is still at our measured move level. Apple's still here. But I'm going to wrap this video up because it is getting lengthy. Congrats on the profits. One, another spectacular day. Um, I don't know about you, but my trading account is certainly, certainly growing in the right direction. So well done to anybody who made profits today on all four, five trades actually. And uh, we've certainly are well positioned, I think, for these markets to see some downside. They are looking tired. They're looking certainly extended. We could see maybe retail now chasing Apple and, and, and Amazon since they've had potentially decent earnings. I don't even know yet. I mean, based off of the price action, it looks that way. Um, but we, I really haven't seen any of the results or heard anything. But that doesn't really matter to me because these markets are getting extended. And let's not forget, we're in a bear market um, with rates falling, tech may get that extra bid, um, but overall, we're still in a bear market. Rates are falling not for the right reason. Rates are falling because we're likely going into an economic global recession, which will ultimately trump everything over the intermediate to long term trend. So let's stay nimble. Let's stay patient and well done. Congrats. Thank you all for being members and we'll see you on the charts tomorrow. Oh, just a quick reminder, my I will be away tomorrow, so tomorrow's daily analysis video will be canceled, but um, I will provide a little bit of a summary in terms of what I have been witnessing intraday. I do have some uh, personal matters to attend to later in the afternoon, so tomorrow's.